Mangrove snakes are starting to hatch, and uh, as you can see, we have a baby here. Hey, hey, buddy, what's, what's wrong with you this morning? You could see what I was talking about when I saw it and was so excited. You're afraid of toads. So not, oh. not all toads. Look at how big it is. I'm excited, guys, because we finally finished salt and peppers and closure. So it's a little bit of a twist on what I've been talking about with all the other melanistic animals. Oh, and by the way, guys, welcome to the vlog. I wanted to get started because I was super excited. I've been really geeked to see when the mangrove snakes are starting to hatch. And uh, as you can see, we have a baby here. There's still two, four, six, five more eggs that are due to hatch. But uh, this is what I wanted to show you. Yes, a baby hatched out. And you know what? It is always awesome to hatch out mangrove snakes. But check this out, guys. I'm telling you what, this is tripping me out. I'm just putting in water just so you guys can see. I think that I actually produced a T positive mangrove snake. Now there have been T positives, which are basically almost like the purplish snake that have hatched before, that have came out of the wild. I don't know if they've been captive hatched or not, but the point is these are two normal mangrove snakes that were bred together and they typically come out black with either yellow or a little bit of reddish bands. And this one is almost purplish looking, something like I've never seen before, only with the T positives. Now the chances of spontaneously producing a mutation like a T positive mangrove are, I don't know, like maybe one in a million, I don't know, maybe 10 million. I have no idea what the odds are. The point is, is that it's really rare and all the snakes I've ever produced, I've only produced a handful of spontaneous mutations that like had never been produced before or at least weren't part of a heterozygous thing. So I think we have a T-pos. Now the truth is guys, we have to hatch the next five eggs in order to really know because if some of them come out like this and some of them come out black, then I am sure that is a T-positive. But I can tell you this much, I've never hatched a mangrove snake that has this kind of purplish grayish hue to it ever before and I've never seen babies like this before so I am pretty sure guys that we may have just produced a T positive mangrove snake which is absolutely incredible now I know what the pairing was that actually produced them so I can mark them and kind of work them back and of course we'll probably raise these babies up now before I get too excited about it again we got to hatch the other eggs and see what they look like but if they all come out like this then maybe it's just a kind of polymorphism if some of them come out black then we know we hatched the T positive so hopefully within the next day or two, the other ones will pip out and we'll kind of start to solve the mystery of potentially this amazing snake. Regardless, what a great way to start the day. I am so excited. This thing is cute. Anytime that you're hatching any snakes, in particular mangrove snakes, it's absolutely amazing. But to hatch something that could potentially be a mutation, oh my, I, I'm freaking out, guys. So I think this is a pretty good start to the day. I hope you guys are having a good start to the day and I'll keep you guys updated as these last ones hatch. I'm so pumped on this, and I want you guys to really understand what I was talking about, about T-positive albino, because you might be thinking albino, and you're thinking, well, Brian, albino's usually like white or yellow or red or something like that. Well, this happens to be a T-positive Nelson's milk snake. Now, the T actually stands for tyrosine, which is a type of pigment in melanin, right? The black pigment. And basically what it is, is when you strip away all the pigment or all that black pigment, but the still the tyrosine is left, it gives it kind of brownish, purplish hue, much like what I think is happening with that mangrove snake. Now with the T positive Nelson's milk snake, when you breed them, actually they're allelic to albino. So if you breed a T positive to a normal albino, about half the babies come out just like this, which is T positive, which makes it really wild. But maybe you're starting to get the idea of what I mean when I said T positive, but I also talked about the fact that it could potentially even be like a hypo. Now interestingly enough, this animal here looks very similar to that T positive Nelson's milk snake, but this is actually a Pueblo milk snake, but we actually call these guys hypo Pueblin milk snakes. Now there are no albino Pueblin milk snakes, so we don't know if it's allelic to albino, but we do know it's a recessive mutation. Now the T positive Nelsons are also recessive, so you could breed them and produce just more T positive. And look at this little monkey trying to bite my finger right there. What a crazy little dude. The fact is, is we don't know if you breed these to an albino if you would get T positive right off the rip because there's no albino. So both the T positive and the hypo are both recessive mutations, and the T positive and Nelsons we know is allelic to albino. Albino. Regardless, I'm trying not to confuse you guys. I just want you guys to understand what I'm talking about, the fact that we may have hatched a T-positive or maybe a hypo mangrove snake, and I am beyond excited. And look at this little monkey. He is so crazy, you chinky little dude. dude. Oh my God, they're so cute. And I love the T-positive and hypo stuff. Oh my God, I cannot wait till the rest of this clutch hatches. And uh, this guy is continuing to chew on me. Hey, hey buddy, what's, what's wrong with you this morning? Okay, well, hopefully you guys understand a little more now.
As I've been thinking about this mangrove snake, I kind of was thinking about different examples of like the how tyrosine and other pigments can really change in different types of albinos. This happens to be an albino western hognose snake. So this would be a normal albino or what they actually would call an orange albino. This is lacking all of the melanin. You can see that orange with the red eyes and stuff like that. But interestingly enough, this is a pastel pink hognose, which probably has a little bit more tyrosine in it, but not quite as much as that purplish brownish look. But you can see the difference between these two animals. This is the same thing. This is an albino hognose. This is an albino hognose. But the difference is, is this is a different mutation when it comes to the orange and this is the pink. And when you breed these two together, you would get normal hognose. This is not a compatible trait. Again, nice big bright red eyes. These guys more like a pinkish eye. So uh, again, it's interesting how just even lacking a little bit of pigment can change the overall mutation. And that's really the difference between these two animals and the other examples I showed you earlier, like the Pueblin and the Nelson. I've got my first tour of the day. And again, a busy day here today. How are you guys doing? It's awesome. Great. And uh, you guys are from Texas, but you live in Michigan and you're from Michigan. Yes. All right, good. All right, so well, I appreciate you guys coming over and have a good time. We're ready to get going. Let's do it. <laughs> figured what I could do is actually show you the difference between an animal that's about six weeks old and this guy here. And basically this one was hatched, looked exactly like this as far as the color. You can really see the difference in fading that happens. It's almost like hypo-ish. Again, that's kind of that lack of tyrosinase. Whether it's a hypo or a T-positive, it's kind of the same thing because you'll see that it's kind of lacking pigment, that black pigment. So this is super cool. I just wanted to kind of compare so that you could see what I was talking about when I saw it and was so excited. So this is pretty crazy, guys. You What's know that crazy? I have have yes, a lot of fears. fears. Yes. But like nothing bridges. really. Yeah, like bridges, all kinds of crazy stuff, but I'm not going to get into that. But I was a little surprised to hear that Andy, my friend, which by the way, has been visiting us for the last couple days, okay. him and Noah have been doing some cool videos. So I'm check Noah. Noah out, check Andy out, link in the description. Uh, they've been having some fun. Who knows what these knuckleheads have been up to. But regardless, you're afraid of toads. So not, oh. not all toads. Giant toads. They are toads. Giant. They, they, so I have toads that live in like my little water thing in my backyard. Yeah. And those toads are cool because they're, they're like that, but they're cute. Yeah. That is not okay. Those are so huge. So no, I was thinking that you know because you guys have been doing a bunch of crazy stuff. Why don't we have Andy lay on the ground and you put yes. toads on him, it's the giant toads idea. on him. It's a great idea. And I think this will help you. I it's love like it. exposure therapy. It is. This is going to be good for you. This will help you. Look at his eyebrows are wiggling. They're wiggling. Okay, so why is it? Yes. yes. All right, let's go. Let's oh, go. yeah. Right, lay down. Oh, lay yeah. Down. Yeah. Lay down. Yeah. You can close your eyes if you want. Nope, because you're going to put something. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. All right. Let's go. Okay, you ready? Just so you know, we, really. we weighed these the, uh, like a month or two ago. Three pounds of toad. Three pounds? You're going to put six pounds of toad on it? Whoa. That what? crazy. What? Uh, he said, whoa. Whoa was a lot. Look at how big it is. It's bigger than your hands, both of them. Oh, that's what she said. <laughs> well done. Dude, it's like staring into my soul right now. Uh, I'm a uh, oh, oh. I, this is weird because you can't move your head any further than your head goes, you know? Ah. They keep moving. What are they doing? Yeah, that's good. Oh, oh my right. god, take it back right. Take it back right. Back right. Oh I could literally have to get on a plane in like an hour and a half covered in toad dirt. <laughs> <sighs> All right, okay. so uh, so I think that this exposure therapy went that really well. Good. I think that you're a better man now. I think maybe I'm sweating is all I've got. I think you're going to love toads soon. Yep, pretty maybe. soon. You're just going to start a toad channel on YouTube. Stay tuned for that. 12 seconds later. Well, we've got the new enclosures for salt and pepper. So there is a few little details that have to be touched up on this. So I am back with my silicone and dust and going to get my part done. I'm excited guys because we finally finished salt and peppers enclosures that will they will be in full time now now we don't have to pull them off display and put them in back anymore and this is a good opportunity to continue to go back to the whole melanistic tea positive thing so of course pepper is a melanistic alligator American alligator that melanin is that black pigment it's a bunch of proteins that are made up to make the black pigment including tyrosine so obviously he's a melanistic alligator and then of course 
This is an albino alligator that's lacking all of that melanin pigment. So let's just go ahead, release these guys into their new enclosures and see what they're gonna look like. There you go, buddy. Ah, oh, there he is. Now again, we had similar enclosures to this, not exactly like this, that they came out here, but they weren't front loading, so we couldn't get to them and stuff like that. Now that they're like this, and look at Pepper, seems to love it out here. Completely different, obviously, because now we can go on this side and we can start training them to actually come up to the glass. Let's go ahead and let salt go in here. Come on, little baby. There you go, sweetheart. There you go, oh yeah loving it and they can get up right onto this level right here where there's a nice basking area that they can go so now they have the basking area they got uv light in here this is going to be perfect for them now we can take them out a lot easier because we don't have to go in the back and grab them they look absolutely amazing in here and i'm so excited to start the new training that we're going to do with them it might take us a couple months to really get it but the hopes are is to get it like we go so come here and she comes right up to the glass we can either feed her or take her out or something like that and that'll get them trained so that when we build in a huge enclosure we don't have to go in and actually go swimming to go get them we can call them up they'll come right up to us and we can take them out so super exciting it's been a big project glad it's finally done and they are in their new habitats got another tour in the house this is actually pretty excited because you were here like three years ago visiting with me way before the reptarium so she's actually been in the vlog before hanging out with my animals so it's so good to have you back and now you're meeting bella what do you think she's cool that's <laughs> awesome well we're gonna have a good time let's see a whole bunch of stuff all right yep yep You know, somehow this vlog, a lot of this vlog turned into talking about melanistic animals, but I figured, you know, just go with it. You know, sometimes things happen that way. So let's talk about Night Fury. Obviously he is a jet black snake. I always say he's my living oil slick because he is so black, but the truth is he's not really melanistic. This is the result of breeding two mutations together, Golden Child, which is kind of a dark brown animal, and then Motley, which is really more of a pattern mutation. And for whatever reason, when you mix those two together, oftentimes you get a jet black snake. Now, sometimes you can get a greenish snake, a brownish snake and then the best results in my opinion is when you get the jet black snake now there's not a lot of them that are as good as night fury out there there's a few for sure but there's not as many but this wouldn't really be considered melanistic right which is a little bit interesting and what i mean by that is that it's not a recessive mutation or a co-dominant mutation that i can breed and produce more of them unless i have the motley and the golden child mutation in the same thing so it's a little bit of a twist on what i've been talking about with all the other melanistic animals and t positive animals and all the albinos and stuff like that but never Nevertheless, I thought it was worth at least bringing up because a lot of you guys might be thinking Night Fury was melanistic. In truth, he really isn't. This is a cool little python species from Indonesia that you don't see very often. These are called Sabu pythons. And this is pretty much as big as they get, which makes them really cool. They're actually from just a little locality called Sabu Island. And it's the only place that they've actually ever been found. It's a really small island, only 10 miles by six miles long, making this python species the smallest location of any python species in the world when it comes to territory. And of course, because they're such a small territory, they obviously don't have a large population back in the 90s they were actually exporting a lot of these guys and I don't even know what the population is now it could pretty much be non-existent on that particular island thankfully there's a handful of people myself included that have been breeding these guys they are just a cool little freckled python with those crazy white eyes a matter of fact when they were first imported they were called white eyed pythons now of course they're called Sabu pythons it's a project that I absolutely love and when they're babies they actually hatch out almost a red color and then ultimately turn into this gray and brown with cool white and yellow pigment on them. So I just think they're really cool. I wanted to share you guys because I know a lot of people don't even know what a Sabu Python is. I absolutely love them. And hopefully we'll have some more babies this next coming year. So regardless, I hope that you enjoyed this video and really got excited about that mangrove snake. Can't wait for the rest of the eggs to hatch. If you enjoyed this video, here's another video where some mangroves actually hatch. Over here is a playlist of me, I don't know, playing with some crazy stuff. Over here, you can hit that subscribe button. And while you're over there can you do me a favor turn those post notifications on have an absolutely wonderful day you better be kind to someone today and i promise i'll see you guys tomorrow